Um, so I guess um, I'll just kind of do a short introduction whilst we're still waiting for some people to arrive. Um, so hello everyone, um, my name is Vanessa. Um, I'm based up at One Code Base in Aberdeen. Um, so we're Code Base, uh, we are a tech cluster. Uh, we work with startups across the UK. So we've got um, our headquarters in Edinburgh. We also have a um, hub in Stirling and Aberdeen. So Codebase on the Couch um, is basically a series of talks um, designed to connect the community during this kind of really weird time that we're living in. And it's also a great way for, um, for, pe for people to hear from speakers that they normally would have to travel, like maybe three, four hours to go see. Um, and we've got the convenience of kind of Zoom and the virtual world um, at the moment. So it's been great to kind of hear from a wide variety of um, topics such we've covered HR, we've covered content creation, and now we're going to cover a bit of uh, creativity. So um, what uh, what's going to happen is uh, Smart's going to talk for a little bit, and then we're going to have a live Q and A at the end. So if you have any questions kind of in between, then feel free to pop them in the Q and A or the chat box below, and we'll get around to them at the end. So what I'll do is I'll just pass over to Smart just now, and um, off you go. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, hey, everybody. It's, it's good to meet you. I think some of you, some of you either know me or have seen me at a code-based talk before or you've never seen me at all. Um, either way, that's cool. My name is Smart. And uh, yes, that's my first name, which is, which is what a lot of people ask me, but it's a good conversation starter. So it's always like, is that really your name? No, it's not. But yeah, but it is. Um, <laughs> uh, I am one of many things, but predominantly I am a designer graphics designer and web designer uh, as well as a creative and uh, I run my own uh, I run I run my own business freelance uh, it's called Prayer Pixel and I support uh, fledgling businesses startup businesses um, people who are just getting into self-employed kind of brand their ID get their brand ID together messaging story and all of those good things um, but then I also work on a lot of creative projects everything from like Video production, some of you may have seen me. I have like a couple of YouTube channels where I used to do um, Pokemon Go videos, if, if anybody was ever into those. And um, yeah, I do music, podcasts, lots of crazy stuff. I'm always working on a, on a side project because it helps to keep me um, active and engaged and just keeps my mind working and all those good things. So yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for, for asking me to, to be a part of this today. Also, I think I said, did I say good morning? It's the middle of the day. It's the I mean, middle I of the day. The, the days and the time of days have all blurred into one. Right. <laughs> so I think that's okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've just posted saying, um, you know, if you've got any questions um, to ask Mark at the end, just pop them in the Q&A or the chat function below. So, um, but yeah, we'll move on. Smart, if you want to um, start yeah. your talk. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I, I, I'm one of those people, I love telling stories. Um, then this is something that I discovered like later on as it, like the older I got, I realized I really like telling stories and I had to like work out where that came from. So I'm going to start with, with, with a funny story. So I, um, as well as being a creative, I've always been really drawn to whether it be a game or a TV show or a film, something with a great storyline and a good moral. But anyway, get to that later but um so I went on holiday one year with my family and uh I think I'm trying to remember where we went somewhere in like somewhere in America anyway uh it was like an island and uh we went to the beach and I at that time I think they had just released like no my parents had bought me my first Game Boy Game Boy Color brand new it was blue it was like midnight blue one at limited edition nobody else had it and uh I took it with me on holiday because I was like addicted to um, playing Pokemon Blue at the time. And uh, we, everybody was like, oh, smart, like you never, you don't play in the sand, like you don't get in the water. Like anybody who knows me well, like I, I love to walk along beaches, but not in the sand. So I was just like, I don't want to get in the sand. I don't want to get wet. Don't want to get my feet wet. They were like, just try it. I was like, okay, it's great. But at the time I had my Game Boy in my pocket um like my shorts pocket and uh they were like i'll just go into the sea so i went into the sea and i totally forgot that my game boy color was in my pocket 
so I like I came out of the sea and I was like, oh yeah, that was fun. And it was just like, wait a minute, was my po- was like my Game Boy in my in my pocket? So it was in my pocket and it got wrecked. And it was just like the worst holiday ever because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't, I couldn't play games. I had to interact with people, um, and that was something that um, I probably at that age I didn't feel I was very good at, apart from uh, like small talk every now and then and stuff. So. Um, yeah, so that was a big deal for me because Pokemon was one of those games that had a story that drew me in. Um, for those of you who don't know my story, I'm actually, I'm dis- dyslexia is a big part of my life. Uh, doesn't define me, but it's a big part of my ability. I, I tend to look at it, um, not a disability. So what I kind of wanted to segue into today was just talking for a couple of minutes to just like encourage people who are um, everybody who's attended this morning who is uh, either creative or in business or you're somewhere in between or you're not really sure. I was one of those people that didn't have a clue like what I wanted to do for the longest time. I just used to look at other people around me in school and be like, oh my gosh, like, I can draw really well. I'm going to go away and like make something up that I can be really good at um, like during the summer and come back. And, and then I was one of those kids that like, couldn't reproduce what they made all summer in front of people so it'd be like oh you know you did what did you what did you do you were supposed to come back and you have like this super amazing thing but it just it didn't uh didn't work out that way um so i had a pretty rocky start with school well in fact all through school all through college it was education uh, experience was a nightmare for me but like it really helped me to be the person i am now um so i kind of look at a lot of those negatives as like my positives and silver linings because it's so easy to be negative all the time um and i think we live in a world that can be very conditioned to make us everything's bad 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 the news is bad like this is you know uh five steps to build this or like 20 10 steps to uh the perfect email marketing or like 100 steps to super grow through YouTube channel and get to like 50,000 subscribers in less than two weeks. It's ridiculous because, and all these models and templates, like we all discover along the way that none of us actually fit into them. They don't work. They never, they, they work for those people, but it doesn't work for everybody. Um, and so one of the, the things that I talk about a lot is about, um, there isn't like a one size fits all, I think, especially for being in creative, being in business, um, I come from a very entrepreneurial family. So other, other members of my family either run their own businesses or have run their own businesses. So I've been around the running of different kinds of businesses. So that's also encouraged me to um, not be afraid to kind of like take risks, I guess, even if I'm going to fall flat on my face. My dad always used to say to me, what do we do when we like when we fail or like we get something wrong at the time that applied to a game I was playing as a kid which was Super Mario and uh, I couldn't get to the castle to save the princess and my dad was like well just you try and you try and you try and you try again and if you still don't get it take a break get refreshed leave it for a day come back another day you know you come with a fresh perspective to look at that thing so that's kind of one of the core values of my business is always thinking outside the box because sometimes it's very easy to be narrow-minded and look at things if you're going to accomplish a task and it's like well this is how we're going to do it it's been like this for 50 years and it's like okay great that's fantastic but like could we do that better in a different way that's maybe more inclusive brings other people along it's more approachable leaves the customer or person selling in a more positive headspace or in their life impacting them in in a positive way somehow so these are some of the things that i just uh wanted to share and um talk about this afternoon um we i think that the challenges that we face and this is it's this is this is very much a pandora's box because not it's it would be easy to say that not every challenge is a good challenge but those challenges help us to make improvements constantly change. So one would have to say that then there is a benefit. There's like a, there's a positive benefit to being challenged because it encourages 
growth, it encourages expansion, it encourages refinement. And as creative people, or people in business, or people who are creative and do business, we're constantly making, like reiterating, making new iterations of the same thing. We get better at it, whether I'm a painter or I'm a carpenter or I'm a musician, we are supposed to practice and work on our craft so that we can be the best thing or the best, like, if you're a singer, you can't like sing one day and it's like you quit. Next, like, well, I'm the best singer. It's all right. I can cut, you know, if you want to sign me to your label, um, you know, I'll be able to sing music that will sell millions. And it's like, well, but I've never heard you. I've only ever heard you sing once, if, if that makes sense. Constant repetition helps to improve the quality and the standard of the work that we produce. And so not being afraid of failure is a really, really good thing because then it means that you're able to look at things retrospectively and see, okay, this didn't work out this time. I'm going to, what can I learn from those experiences and take away from it and be like, okay, I'll do this next time. Um, don't be afraid to come up with crazy ideas. Anybody who's met me in real life has heard me say this a million times. I probably say this at every networking event I go to, but that's just that I'm an ideas man. I literally have a ideas book and I, that's probably not my idea. That's from my business mentor. She, so she gets all the credit for that because I did come up with that. But um, she always encourages me to write my ideas down because sometimes I can come up with a great idea that doesn't, it's not the right time for it or the world isn't ready for it. It's tangible. It has scope. It can really do great things or it can really make me a lot of money, but is it the right time to do it? And sometimes those things can, they're still at the forefront of your mind, but they're in an ideas book. And maybe when the time is right and you are, I don't know, maybe financially in a better place or your time management is more organized and you have more time to dedicate to this project, you can see it um, come to light because you're able to give it the attention to detail that it needs in order for it to go to the next level. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't want to really talk too long um but i just i think it's i just wanted to encourage everybody you know that if you feel if you're feeling down or you feel like you don't have a purpose or you think feeling like there isn't anything that you're good at or maybe you've been pushing your business for years and it's like is this idea really gonna work i always say to people do what you're most passionate about and the thing that you're most passionate about isn't necessarily the thing you went to school for or university for. Sometimes it's that thing that you wake up with every day, like that first thought on your mind, that thing that really gets you going, that thing that sparks as soon as somebody asks you a question about it. It's like, yes, I like I have a friend who loves to crochet and it's like, but she's a, she's like a digital linguist. She, she does linguistics for, games development but she loves to knit she loves to crochet and it's like the two conversations although she's learned a lot about stuff to do with her career she's more passionate about knitting and being creative and all of these things so that's where her passion and that's where her drive comes from so often she'll take those things that energy and she channels it into her work but then you know she would debate whether she does everything she can to make sure that I must knit this week. Like I've got to knit. And somehow whether she stays up till 5am, you know, or she wakes up at 7am in the morning early just to knit something before she goes to work. Um, that helps, that helps to grow her passion. It helps to shape her craft a little bit more. And that helps her to always keep her dream alive in the forefront and in the focus and i think that that's that's a really important thing to do because then life doesn't get at us age doesn't get at us status quo doesn't get at us like our finances don't get at us all of these things that condition us to limit us from being the best us that we can be being the best you that you can be um begin to kind of melt away and i know it's easier said than done i i know it without a doubt um building a business from being just self-employed to 
running my business where it is now, where it's, it's a little bit more successful each year. And some seasons it's great, you know, and I'm still thankful even in the seasons when I have less. Um, and then like, I'm extremely excited when everything, <laughs> when everything's going, going well. And it's like, yes, my bank account's full until bills come and then it's all gone. It's like, oh God, why? Um, so yeah, so hopefully like something I've said this morning has been morning. I'm obsessed with mornings. I'm a morning person. It's probably where that comes from. Um, yeah, hopefully something I've said this afternoon has been beneficial. Um, one of the things I did just kind of want to touch on before I um, hand over, I'm scrolling through my notes, so this is completely um, unprofessional, but um, yeah, I think, I think, I think that was it. That was more of a say. It was just to let you guys know that, oh, that was it. You're never too old to learn something new. Um, I, and it's funny, like I have this, like I have older sisters who they're like in their forties um, and I'm like in my early thirties and uh, it's really funny here. And then I have like a younger sister who's like, she's three years younger than me. So she's like, she's, technically a, 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 she's really a millennial i'm kind of like on the outer edge i'm more of an 80s kid but you know that's that's neither here nor there you can go to google for that we're not going to have that debate but um the different thought processes and there are you know sometimes i have conversations with them and they're like oh gosh you know maybe i'm just maybe i'm too old for that and i'm like what are you kidding me it's like people double your age running like company huge companies or like they're making films or like they're making products or they're making t-shirts like if you want to do something just do it um that's a philosophy that a lot of people use with um creating content for youtube whether it be instagram or and all of these kind of things you want to find your niche and what you want to do is focus on you because at the end of the day what you're excited about, there's somebody out there who's also excited about it. If you can get five of those people, 10 of those people, 15 of those people, 20 of those people, you begin to grow your influence, you grow your business, and you begin to stand out from the crowd. This is something that I teach a lot of the clients that I work with because then nobody can copy what you do. They can try, but they won't be good at it because it's very much focused on your skills, your talents, and the things that you know, like in your sleep, like you can do it with your eyes closed that those are the things that you want to invest your time in and your energy into and i know that that's not a simple thing to achieve because sometimes we we do have a lot of responsibilities and we do have a lot of commitments and those things are of equal value and importance but i would just encourage you to not give up on looking for your way and sometimes it's not a big way. Sometimes it's a small way, but those small ways are important to you and that makes it big. Um, so yeah, that's, I just want to encourage you guys to keep, um, keep being creative and know that there is a plan and a purpose for your life, whether you believe that in that or not. Um, nobody's just created to exist. Everybody's created with some sort of passion or dream or idea. Um, and like when it's the right time, it will, it will come to life. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Laura. A virtual round of applause for Smart. Thank you so much for that. I think, um, yeah, a lot of the things that you said um, kind of really resonated with me. But yeah, if anyone has any questions that you want to ask Smart, or if you want to probe a little bit further in some of the things he says, then yeah, feel free to ask away. Um, I always say in Kobe's on the couch that there's no there's no stupid questions, so ask away. <laughs> um, yeah, it was actually really interesting what you said and kind of like the last thing that you touched on um, about how you're never too old to do something new. And I think, um, you know, I was born in the 90s and when I was growing up, it's kind of like, you know, you pick your one career path and that's it. And it's kind of right. in you, especially since university. It's like I, had a, I have a law degree. And from the first year, from the first week of university, it's like you will all be solicitors. It was like the main drive. So yeah, it's actually been quite refreshing in this kind of day and age. I don't know whether it's the kind of world of social media, the world of digital creation that's mm -hmm. kind of started to make people think, actually, no, you're not too old to learn new skills. No, you're not too old to start a business. You could Definitely. be in your mid-30s and still not know what you want to do. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's um, 
I think it's definitely really encouraging to hear kind of more people put that out into the world as well. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question come through from okay. Craig. Um, he says, oh, it's quite a long question. Um, do, you, <laughs> <laughs> do you think the pandemic has caused a situation where taking a risk is easier, things have slowed down, uh, people have been reassessing their lives and values, which puts you in a better position to look at what you really want to do. But then the outlook for the economy now and in the new future doesn't look good. That's a really good question. That's that. Wow. <laughs> so I like that question. I like that question because like that's a that's a, a question that like spurs on more conversation. Mm. But yeah, that's a really cool question because I think that's something that I that I've talked to several people about in the last like four or five months. Um, there's all this, um, you know, here's, here's one way to look at it. Cause I could go like to town on this, but I'm going to intentionally keep it short. When isn't it a good opportunity to start a new business? That's the question. If you have the passion, the drive and the know-how, then there's nothing that you can't accomplish. Um, and I, I, this is something that I say to everybody, the, 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 whether the stocks are, are, are up or down is gonna make no difference. If you, if you have the ideas and you know how to do the right research, you can use that circumstance to your advantage. And this is something that I, I intentionally practice in, business so i'll give you an example so i have a um i have two youtube channels i have one youtube channel that i have always dedicated to kind of doing what i'm doing right now which is like encouragement videos talking about different a lot of the things that i struggle with personally either as a creative or somebody who is uh neurodiverse specifically dyslexia um or any other kind of creative out there and um I began creating Pokemon Go videos. This was my tactic because I needed a vehicle to drive. Like I needed, I needed, uh, uh, I needed to catch the bus to get me somewhere before I took over driving the bus. If that makes sense, not like, not like I'm going to literally become a bus driver, but yeah, you get the illustration. And that vehicle was Pokemon Go, and I rode that bus for as long as I could, and then eventually, like I got off the bus and I began to walk, like plot my own path. But the success that I gained from using Pokemon Go like grew my YouTube channel. So in that time, what I did was kind of begin to form relationships with a lot of the influential people who were already in that space. And the opportunity just kind of opened itself up. And at the time, one of the biggest YouTubers who was doing Pokemon Go content was uh, requesting videos from all around the world so i got in touch i said my video getting in touch by the way was really hard to do um because he gets but he he got thousands of emails at the time but uh he picked mine as one of the videos to feature from edinburgh scotland and at the time he had like an insane amount of subscribers i, I won't throw numbers because i feel like sometimes those it we live in such a metric measured world and numbers it's like those are actual living human beings and i think putting it into numbers makes it easier easier for us to comprehend rather than us imagining the scope of millions of people watching one person's stuff all at once but yeah he he showed my he shared my video and that was it my channel grew and i think i went from i had like diligently grown my own subscriber base without any help from like zero to i think maybe a hundred and that took me a year and then the video was featured and in like one day i was at like two thousand subscribers and i was like losing my mind because <laughs> the pressure of creating content what do people want monetization how am i going to make my money biggest and most important thing is if you're ever going to start a business make sure that you have a regular and stable income right now it could be part-time work could be um if you have to live with your parents in order to accomplish your dream because it's better for you to have support than just go all out 
guns blazing and then you end up flat on your face because even when you start that new thing there's a lot to learn and so i would say that there isn't a perfect time to begin but i would just be aware of like what's going on so like stuff with covid any smart business person will be watching kind of like the um i don't know i always forget what the word is but like the watching like paying attention to the season examining how other businesses are scaling scaling up or scaling down depending on what's going on um financially like the business scene like borrow from all the different things that people are learning the more you the more you learn from their mistakes the better your whatever your thing is is going to be that you want to do whether it be changing career or starting a new business so yeah that's just that's one way to look at it <laughs> i think i'm um, kind of um a bit of a branch on that um you need talked a bit about you know just youtube and things like that like how do you find your niche because you're you know you go onto youtube there's you know, you type in something, for example, yeah. I don't know, how to take care of a plant. And there's like hundreds and hundreds of plant tutorials. Like how do you, um, you know, find the confidence to kind of go ahead and do what you want to do, like your passion, which could be plants and, you know, try and find that like niche and, you know, try not, try not to compare yourself to maybe some of the bigger ones out there or, you know, trying to find your way in like this, like a bit of a needle in a haystack kind of, kind yeah. of way. No, what would you kind of give for someone who just kind of wants to get started but doesn't have the confidence because there's just so many good content creators out there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh really great question i have a brilliant answer to this because and like if you <laughs> this is this is the kind of advice that people literally will they'll charge you serious amounts of money for this but um some of the trade secrets for navigating youtube are number one keywords so keywords are so if i type in the word dog into google keywords are every other suggested search term that comes up so if i type in um hello like every other thing in that list those are all the most searched terms in google search engine which means that those are all the most popular um searched words those are your marketing words because whenever you're advertising a product you improve your odds by tagging your work with those searched terms it means that then when somebody's searching for something in google your content is likely to show up somewhere in those search results whether it be page one or be page 100 or in between there or somewhere in between there your odds are dramatically improved and the same works for youtube youtube is a search engine because at the day at the end of the day uh, it's like a library we all walk into a library and we're looking for a book and we go to the librarian and say hey i'm looking for a book on how to uh how to start a farm and she's like yeah aisle number 33 you'll find lots of different books on how to start a farm that's literally literally what um youtube is and google is and so for anybody who wants to start and they are nervous to be in front of a camera, you don't, you don't literally have to be in front of the camera. Um, I actually really don't like being in front of, <laughs> being in front of cameras. No, what, no matter what, like my family's really too great on, on, on screen. It's something that I had to learn to get into. But even, even now it's still like seeing myself and having to edit videos and just like one hour of staring at your own face um is enough to drive you crazy but yeah um there's lots of there's there is so many different ways to be creative on youtube um one example i think that you mentioned before vanessa was like um plants stuff to do with plants is huge on youtube there are like core categories of things on youtube that are really big uh health and lifestyle beauty uh i think diy and um like entertainment so entertainment is huge that could be films comedy sketches uh voice acting um like the world is lit literally your oyster so finding your niche really is about just focusing like hyper focusing down on 
what are the core things about the thing that you love? So um, I'll use myself as an example. I am a get like I'm I'm a gamer. I, I always tell people this. Um, gaming was a huge therapy for me as a dyslexic kid growing up, and it helped me to uh, learn to articulate myself either with hand-eye coordination because I had very bad hand-eye coordination and I was really clumsy. Um, so one of the things that my parents introduced me to was Pokemon and Pokemon although it was just a game it was more about the mechanics that they used within the game that I then learned new skills so whether or not that was like communication or reading reading was a really big challenge for me as somebody that's dyslexic every dyslexic person is different and wherever you are on the spectrum um, you may or may not understand but reading was a challenge for me. So having a game that encouraged me to read actually improved my reading. And I saw my school results change. Now, it works differently for everybody. I'm not literally saying if you've got kids, stick them in, fr in front of Fortnite and you know they're gonna get uh, like A pluses in everything. It depends on what kind of game that you're giving them. I wouldn't recommend Fortnite for your kids' education because they're probably getting enough of that if they play it right now or not. But like things that, in, that in, encourage you to use your mind more, so whether it be puzzles, and although you may not see the immediate effect of it, you will see the effect later on in their life. And they hopefully will recognize it too in things that they do. And it's like, oh, wait, how am I it? Like, when did I get good at like reading this quickly or when did I get good at typing this quick or when did I get good at recognizing sequences or patterns and all of these things like we don't ever stop learning that's how the human mind works so it's not just school it's everything um from the minute you're born everything you see everything you look at everything you touch everything is measured and calculated by the brain and you're like oh okay this is this is an orange I take the skin off the orange then I put it in my mouth. I don't put it in my mouth with the skin and then like and everything in it. Um, so the same kind of works with like finding your your niche. So for me, again, it was so for me, it's gaming and dyslexia. And when I look around, there isn't really many people kind of in that space. There's a few people who have like touched on it, but there's nobody who's in like a lot of detail. So that's kind of like the angle that I come out for some of the stuff that I create. The rest, I think it's really just about doing your research and reading, looking at other examples of people who are doing what you want to do and just borrowing little ideas from them. Not necessarily like ripping their ideas, like, like completely stealing their ideas because that would be, that'd be insane. Nobody does that. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, you know, there's like, a lot of people would say no idea is original and I guess that's true to an extent um, because it's like we're all repeating processes that have kind of already been done so it's like if I'm gonna if I want to sell my own alcohol well there's like thousands of brands of alcohol worldwide it's like what's different about yours what's the flavor what what group of people would want to drink it and so I think sometimes our friends and family are the closest to measuring the attraction to what we want to do sometimes not all the time sometimes our family's like somewhere else and it's like do you even get what i'm doing it's like no i don't so it's like, okay I'll, I'll like i'll have to find somebody else to um to speak to who who may understand that and that's what's good about being a part of uh code base and the, the wider creative community in edinburgh so there's lots of pools and interesting really clever and smart people who um know more than than any of us know and it's okay to to speak to them and borrow ideas and get help like honestly getting help is a good thing if if you're always willing to humble yourself uh you win people to, to your side very quickly because then it means that everything isn't just always about you um it's about others and then people always want to help you because it means that you're teachable you're willing to add something to their life, even though you're trying to get something, at, you're trying to get value added to you ultimately, but you get so much back when you have less expectation or no expectation. So that's. 
Cool, thanks for that. Um, we welcome. actually have a, a question through from, um, from Neil. Um, he says, our passions are not always our strengths. And following them, our passions, can potentially lead to lack of success or self-fulfillment. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, that's, yeah, I mean, I think, I think I can, I can completely respect that point of view. Um, because from experience personally too, like there's been times where I've launched something and like fallen flat on my face, you know, and I was equally passionate about it. And I think that that's where I spoke about earlier about looking at failures or looking at challenges like a positive thing. Sometimes it's not necessarily about that thing coming to light, but it's about the results of what we went through start middle finish what did we get from that and i guess it that journey is a journey that each individual person has to kind of walk themselves and figure out there's no like one answer that i could that anybody could ever give to that because i think that there's a lot of um there's yeah there's like there's like a journey there's an emotional journey there there's like a physical journey sometimes depending on what it is and you really have to assess and then and eventually later on ask you ask yourself what is success to you what does that look like because at the end of the day really that's what this is about um and it, it kind of ties into the previous question before um i think it's really important to know what success means to you you not the world not what Twitter tells you, not what Instagram tells you, not what YouTube tells you, not what the news tells you, not what even your family expects is success. You. Because if you're never content with a level of, with any level of success, then you will always be hungry for more. And that can sometimes be super self-destructive. And I know that personally because that's, I'm, I'm very much a perfectionist. And when something doesn't work out, it, it, really damaged me in the past because it was like that failed i'm a failure that didn't work out i should be really successful i should have this much money and it's like who like who made that stuff up like where does that even come from whoever said that having x amount of money equals success no that was like that's a pre-measured stereotype in order to make people fit into that and that is not that's not the only way to live life and so i think it's important to appreciate whatever level of success you are at whether you're writing ideas down and you haven't necessarily made them public yet or you've published them or maybe you have the dreams just in your heart or maybe you think about it every now and then and you miss some you you feel like you missed out on something like in your youth or you missed out on something in school or you felt like you were robbed or like somebody's work was better than yours i think it's really important to measure your value not by like other people's standards is important for you to to know where where you're at in your own journey and um and your own growth so that that would be my answer to that that's a, that's a really good answer i hope that's answered your question neil if not um feel free to if not i'm happy to, have <laughs> yeah. to, have to keep talking <laughs> um we've got um we've got two more questions from craig actually just, okay. oh it's three um you said um i don't know which one to pick um should i go over the top one um, oh hold on um, so to follow on from neil's question he says mm -hmm. do you think people are starting to value more what people are passionate about and believe in and rewarding rather than the overall execution of an idea yeah i think i think we're kind of going back in time um and i've had this conversation with a number of people i think um it took a i think any and this 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 segues back into what i started with before this is really about looking at what positives can i take from this negative situation um and using that to determine what is the most important thing to you in life is it your family is it your dog is it your money is it your car is it your possessions or is it the people that love and care about you? Or is it about, I really felt like I should have gone this way in my career, but I went this way because everybody said to me, if I don't have 
this, this, that, and this. I don't have insurance. If I don't have a car, if I don't have all of these things, I'm not considered valuable. That's insane. That is, that's, that's actually the most, like the wildest thing like I've ever heard. Um, and I think that it's, it's important to make sure that you, that we're not dangerous with our outlook on how we measure things. So I think like Neil's saying, I think that it's, I think a lot of people, like I know for myself, I definitely did. Like I reassessed things and I was like, you know what? Um, I really don't want to do web design anymore. So I'm, I'm just going to stop doing, <laughs> I'm just going to stop doing web design. Um, because I realized that like, I have other passions that I'm probably just as good at. That doesn't mean, don't get me wrong, like, and this goes back into what I was saying before about starting something new and making sure that you have your bases covered. Like, you want to make sure that even if you're not quote unquote exactly where you want to be financially, you want financial support, whether that's coming from family or that's coming from a Kickstarter campaign. Um, or whether that's coming from um, like support from organizations like Codebase, whether in Sterling or Edinburgh or like uh, any other um, um, organization that is helping people who are either entrepreneurs or creatives, support is basically what I'm saying. It's important to make sure that you have support in the decisions that you're making. So if you need a mentor, business mentor, like this is this goes into what I was saying before, never be too afraid to get help because at the end of the day it's like what is it a pride issue or an ego thing to get help in something that maybe you you're really unfamiliar with or you haven't touched like for maybe 20 or 30 years it's okay to get a refresher and like speak to somebody who has a bigger scope about some of the things that you're really passionate about because those things will that will springboard you into thinking about what you want to do maybe a different way or going about achieving things in a different way whether it be oh i want to get a bank loan and somebody's like you know what don't get a bank loan you can maybe go here this organization has grants they have all this stuff they'll help you put this together um so yeah that's that's, that's kind of what i was <laughs> to say to that <laughs> Cool. I hope that's answered uh, your question, Craig. Um, if not, feel free to pause another one. Also, we should have time to get through these um, these other two questions. Um, mm -hmm. up the the one that we came up earlier. Um, you said challenge is good. Um, do you take this approach with clients and challenge their ideas and how they want things done? And how do you find their response to this? <laughs> yeah. um, <My> question. <laughs> the short the it's a really good question. The short answer is stereotypically no. Um, because everybody, when you're your own boss, it's like, look, you came to me, you want your business to shine. So if you let me help you, it will end up where you want it to go. But no, you came with your brief and you have like ways that you want things done. And that's cool. That's okay. Um, so I think that this also goes back into what I was saying about having humility, um, whenever you're offering a service it's about hospitality the customer is always right right that's that's what they teach it's the same if you're going to work in retail the customer is never wrong but we live in a society that's very opinionated and opinion matters and it's important to use our voices in the right way at the right time um and so for me i found the challenge it's like i measure myself by the quality of like the level of work that I can produce or the, um, the volume of work I can produce or the, the class of work that I can produce. So when a client makes me produce work that is personally below that, I feel, yeah, they're like ecstatic. They're happy with it. They think it's amazing. That can be a real challenge for me. Um, but sometimes keeping it simple is the most important thing and you're being paid to follow the client's brief so follow the client's brief and get the job done so that's that's kind of like um that's my mo on that i try to i try to be gentle with myself and also be gentle with the client because they have a lot of expectations and you have a lot of expectations from them as a client so yeah yeah i think as um that whole customer is always right kind of mentality is um it's tough especially when you're your work you're like i don't feel like it's my good standard but they love it it's yeah um, 
yeah. it's hard to so hard to <laughs> talk about I'm trying to do yeah it. definitely um, but no thanks so much for the answer um, hopefully we've got we've got hopefully we've got time for another one um, so another question is is your creative work more about resonating with people on a human level and being honest rather than trying to tick boxes to what you think people will engage with to get the likes, follows, etc. Or do you, t um, do you need to take both into consideration? That's a really good question. And I thought I was going to answer that with just yes. Um, but yeah, so it's, I guess it's, I guess it's a perfect blend of both because it's important for you to be aware of what people are attracted to and make sure that you are presenting your thing in a similar light, not exactly the same, in order for it to sell well. Um, and that's an irritative, irritative, irritative oh my, my English is terrible. Um, that's, a, that's a process that is constantly being refined. As time goes along, you're going to get better at, better at it. Um, if you edit videos and you've done it for five years, where you were at the beginning, where you were at the middle and where you are now, it's retrospectively, like, it's like night and day. When I look at stuff that I produced maybe like 10 years ago, it looks like what it should look like. An amateur trying to learn how to video edit compared to now, which is like, it's a little bit better than when it was before. I'm, I don't toot my own horn when it comes to my creative work because I'm very self-critical like I mentioned before um if somebody says something's good to me I'm kind of still looking at it saying like I'm sure I could have made that like a zillion times better than it looks right now but it's important to appreciate every level of growth uh because in a way you kind of rob yourself from encouraging yourself at whatever level you're at at that time and that's important it's important that you recognize your gifts your assets the things that make you amazing um and, and everybody's amazing in their own right so it's important that you appreciate um that so but yeah um it's it's one of those things like i think it's like being a baker or, or a cook you know if you put too much salt in your food it's gonna it's gonna taste disgusting um and the same goes for any of my creative projects some things though are just like purely creative and i'm not looking for critique but then somehow people find it and it's like oh my gosh this is amazing and i'm like it's just a rough sketch or like it's just me messing around but sometimes it's like those things that we do when nobody's looking are really what people want they don't want the super produced stuff um so i kind of i always try to um, I think you were right where you, in the question you picked up on saying, do I focus on the heart? I like to relate to people. Um, and so, so in one way, shape or form, we can all relate to each other with different experiences. And I find that that's, um, that's often more special. Does that get you 50,000 subscribers? No, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> it doesn't until you get you find that springboard platform that you can jump off of that pushes you to the next level um, and then more like-minded people can see what you have and appreciate it um, that's where the strategy comes in because you've got to find your ways and uh, it's there's no one way there's no one way to do it but the more you talk to other people and the more you seek to add something to them the better it positions you for that special moment when you're finally able to get some somewhere closer to the kind of success that you you want to get to but here here it is like am i saying having 100 subscribers is less than having you know 200,000 subscribers no it shouldn't really because those 100 people are investing 5 to 20 minutes watching me rant about basically nothing um, so I've got to appreciate a hundred the same way I would appreciate one. And then, then you can grow bigger because then people know that you value every single person and not just, it's, new, it's not just a number. No, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I think, um, and it's something that I've always said, um, kind of like in my line of work is 
you know, would I rather have like five people who are really engaging in a webinar, for example, mm -hmm. um, asking lots of really good questions, um, being like the target audience that we want to, to aim for, they have them getting a lot out of it, rather than having like 50 people, no one's really that interested, no one's asking questions, people have switched off or that they're on their phones, right. playing, like yep. I would rather have those five people that are there in the conversation and yeah i think um i think what you said is kind of really, really true and um i think it's something to, to, to kind of bear in mind with, with for anyone who's creating content and being creative and things like that so yeah great question craig and hope uh, hope smart has answered your question if not hopefully we have enough time to fit in some follow-ups but um yeah if anyone has any more questions we probably have time to fit in maybe one or two depending on the length of the question but um no, um, I actually had a bunch of questions that I haven't even got around to doing, so... Oh, gosh, yeah. Go <laughs> I might ahead, be able like, to take um, Well, which ones like, would I want to hear for? And um, you mentioned in your talk earlier about um, kind of negativity, so kind of how do you overcome that? How do you overcome kind of the negative thoughts, not only negative feedback from people like criticizing your work, but kind of the negative thoughts internally? Um, when you're being creative, when you're creating content, like I'm not good enough, um, it doesn't fit, it's like no one's reading it, like how do you kind of overcome that and kind of then take the next step into doing something more? Because I guess the more you do it, the um, the better you're becoming is, like in mm -hmm. any skill that you do, but like how do you kind of o overcome those negative thoughts? Um, that's a really good question because um, I would, the old me would probably paint a really sad story about how I felt that um, because of my differences, I've had a lot of negativity thrown at me. And I think that it's just the way I'm made where the more people are negative, the more I'm eager to kind of like one up them. Or like a lot of people say like 10X, 10X them. Because it's like, if you say I can't do something, I'm going to do it. Like I'm going to do it. I'm probably better than somebody else did it before. That's kind of, that's kind of how it worked. It's always worked for me. Um, and it's not in like an arrogant way, but it, I always kind of felt it in a more like you really underestimate like what I can do. Um, and like I, like most of my school experience was that was like teachers or like classmates underestimating what I could do me doing something and then they're like oh okay I didn't know that that was like okay this is like they had to like either whether they're gonna report it or like um be happy about it but like I was I was kind of like long gone like I wasn't waiting for their appreciation I knew for myself what I was good at and I think that that's it's important to appreciate that now the negativity thing um, that's, that's always been a challenge because, um, it's always easier to be negative. And, um, I just always said to myself, I want to be one of those people that I made a, I guess I made a choice. Like I made a mental choice to always encourage, be an encourager. It's what I am. Number one. So if somebody asks me like, what do I do? I'm an encourager. That's literally what I do. Like, there's no situation somebody could tell me they're having a bad day and I'm, like, really fighting to not try to encourage them because I understand that sometimes it's important to let people go through what they're going through, whether it be grieve or, like, vent or, like, it, it's important to have space for that. But it's also important to cap that off with encouragement, building up, making people laugh, sharing a funny story, um adding some kind of value or appreciation to their life because uh, it's going to have a positive impact on them somewhere in their, in their story. Um, and so, yeah, I guess for me, um, that's, that's kind of part of the, the equation. The other side of it is um, I have very, um, I have a strong faith. And so that's where a lot of my kind of like grounding comes from. Um, and making sure that for myself I have a good support structure because I think that it's so easy to kind of be by yourself um and we live in a world that encourages us to like everything's kind of like me 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 um so I spend a lot of time like whether it be doing charity work like my mom, my mom runs a charity 
um, that that helps women in domestic violence and stuff. So I dedicate a lot of my uh, free time helping with that, whether it be print design work or like graphics design work or like maintaining their websites and stuff like that. So I've always been very driven to help other people. And I guess that comes from my parents because they've always been like that. Like they'll, <laughs> even if it's like the last like red cent in their, in their bank, they'll always like try to help somebody with it. And so I grew up seeing that. So inherently I always gear towards like looking for the silver lining in, in, the, in that stormy cloud. So yeah, that's kind of where, how I, how I tackle some of those things. But, um, I think like taking a situation that is bad and flipping it on its head. And I'm always like, okay, what's the other, what's there's, there's more to this than just like, obviously what, is negative um i used to get like really negative comp like when I, in fact when i did um pokemon go video for the guy in america i had a lot of like people who were like uh i had some people that were like racist i had people that were like this guy's not even scottish why is he why is he doing a video about scotland like what is this <laughs> just, and this is like this long like thousands and thousands of people um all echoing the same things and i'm just like i'm sat there laughing because these people are wasting one hour talking about my video watching it over and over and over again so i'm like look this is obviously it struck a good chord in you enough for you to want to come and comment on it so i kind of end up appreciating those people because for you to set aside that much time to dedicate to what i'm doing is uh, that's pretty crazy because i'm not sure i could do i'm not sure i could do the same yeah um you know what i actually think we could just spend all day talking about this sort of stuff but uh we've actually had a really good question coming from craig um he says um could i ask you to share the name of the charity your mom is involved with and would it be possible to make a donation as a thank you for your time um in the webinar so um oh that'd be that's wow that's really <laughs> nice really appreciate it yeah um i can draw i can the name of the charity is uh it's jhm scotland but i will put the um the link in the chat if i can find the chat yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's, really, who... that's a really good um a really good question great to, to kind of end this on and it's um like i said honestly i could sit and listen to you all day um i have watched <laughs> a couple of your youtube videos and i make the time to sit and watch so yeah it's been great oh, to thank have you, have you on and um yeah so i think smarts popped the the website up on the chat so if anyone wants to take a quick screenshot or a quick copy then it's there for you i'll take a quick copy as well just to um, I'll send a follow-up email to everyone um, if they would like. So, oh. cool. So, um, yeah, if, thank you so much, Smart, for joining us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank I you. have so many more questions for you, but I know that we're running out of time. I wish we could <laughs> a longer, a longer yeah. webinar. But, um, yeah, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for joining us today. Um, we don't have a next planned code based on the couch just yet, but if you keep an eye out on the website and our social media, We'll be sure to let everyone know. Um, the next Codebase event is actually unfiltered on Wednesday morning. It's a monthly um, kind of catch up um, over a cup of coffee um, for techies, non-techies, creatives to kind of like get together, chat, talk about all things um, in Scotland, how they're getting on and kind of share some tips and tricks. And we also have a micro talk um, from Jessica Armstrong talking about, you know, how to maximize your networking time um, during the kind of this uh, weird time just now. So yeah, if you fancy coming along to that, it's a free event. So everything's on our website. It is thisiscodebase.com forward slash events. So um, again, thank you so much, Smart. It's been absolutely amazing having you on. Um, so yeah, another virtual round of applause. Uh, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> And uh, yeah, if anyone wants, um, you know, a follow-up um, follow email or if they um, need the, the website again for the charity, then please send us an email and we'll get onto it. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody who came as well and like uh, asked questions and stuff. I'm always available. People want to reach out to me on social media and stuff. I, I think it's in the, in the, the code base yeah. tweet. So yeah. Can you yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye.